All right, hello bearded bee people. <clears throat> Welcome back to Bee and K Bees for more of our beekeeping crash course. Today's episode is going to be on knowing what you're looking at and for in your hives as you're going through your inspections. Firstly, we're going to uh, look at the anatomy of a healthy hive to try to understand the way things should look so that we can kind of, you know, understand when things don't look as they should. Um, a healthy bee colony consists of way more than just bees. Well, first of all, there's three different types of bees, three different castes, as we've discussed in the biology portion of the crash course. And that includes workers, a queen, and some drones, depending on the time of season that you're inspecting. In addition to that, there's brood, uh, which can consist of any different stages of brood, which would be eggs and larvae and capped brood. Uh, and of course, there's also drone brood and worker brood. Those look different and of course produce different types of bees. And then in addition to the brood, we have food. Um, so generally, the way a hive is set up uh, naturally or as a beekeeper um, is the brood area is the lower portion of the hive. It'll have food on the perimeter and above but generally the lower portion of the hive is uh, consistent of mostly brood. Um, so in terms of food, we have a few different things. We've got bee bread, which is a product that the bees make out of pollen. When they bring pollen back, all the brightly colored pollen on their hind legs, uh, they pass it to nurse bees and those nurse bees smash that pollen into cells and add a little bit of nectar and that ferments it and turns it into a longer shelf life version of a uh, bee bread. That's what we call it. And uh, that is what the young bees use to be able to feed the uh, larvae uh, in the brood nest. So in addition to the bee bread, we'll have open nectar, which looks quite a lot like water in the cells and then honey as well. Um, on the slide here, you see a beautiful frame. This is probably a late summer frame. And I say that because there's quite a big honey band on the top of the frame and uh, generally that honey band grows as summer draws on. Um, and then you see a nice patch of brood uh, on the lower and central portions of that frame. So, uh, in addition to the brood and food and bees inside the hive, surrounding everything on the walls or the, the cavity of the hive is what's called a propolis envelope. And propolis is a product that bees make from tree sap. And we call it bee glue because it essentially glues everything together. Um, but it has a couple of other interesting properties, the main one being that it's antibacterial. So the propolis envelope surrounding and gluing everything together in the hive not only helps to keep everything together and uh, not you know easily blown apart in uh, wind, um, but it also helps the bee's immune systems with its natural antibacterial properties. Okay, so now that is what a healthy hive should consist of. Now as a beekeeper, you are going to get into your hives and have to figure out if your hive looks healthy and figure out, you know, what is going on with your hive and what you as a beekeeper should be doing for them. Uh, so to do all of that, you've really got to figure out what it is you're looking at. Uh, the first and foremost thing that most people are looking for when they get into their bees is either their queen or a sign that their queen is in there and doing what she should be doing. Uh, so I don't spend a crazy amount of time looking for queens because if I see eggs, that's enough evidence for me that she's in there doing what she's doing. So I recommend to you that as soon as you see eggs, you should, you know, feel okay if you don't end up seeing the queen because that's a de definite sign that she was in there doing what she should be doing within the last three days. Um, in addition to the queen uh, and a sign that she's been doing what she's doing, you also want to inspect the brood nest. Um, you know, so not just the eggs, but also the larvae and the capped brood and all that. Uh, because the brood nest can be a great sign of the health of your hive. Uh, a nice, as we saw in the previous slide, a nice sheet of brood like that with few breaks is a good sign of a healthy hive. 
Um, but if you see stuff with uh, more empty cells than uh, brood cells, or if you see something with you know just a couple of brood cells over the course of the frame, that is a sign of either a disease problem or of a failing queen. Um, and it takes a little bit of practice and experience to be able to figure out exactly what a, a healthy brood nest looks like. But watching YouTube videos and getting into your bees and being mindful of the, what your brood nest looks like will get you to that ability to where you can pretty easily identify uh, when your brood nest doesn't look good. Okay, and so here is a picture of some eggs. Eggs are really tough to see and they're even harder to take pictures of. So I got this on public Wikipedia and it's a beautiful picture of eggs on the right and really, really well-fed larvae swimming in royal jelly on the left. And this is, a, this is a beautiful, a beautiful piece of frame right here. If you see a whole bunch of stuff like this on your frames, uh, you'd be likely, at, you'd be correct in assuming that your bees are doing well and they're healthy. Okay, and then on this slide, we've got a picture of a frame that has some pretty obvious worker brood on the right and drone brood on the left. Um, it's pretty easy to tell the difference when they're right next to each other. Uh, once again, as you see more frames and inspect more brood areas, you'll be able to figure that out if it's a drone, uh, if it's a drone cell, queen cell, or worker brood really quickly. It's probably not quite so obvious or easy to you if you're really, really new at this hobby um, right now, but it will be. Okay, so another thing you should be looking for are evidence of ample food stores. Uh, here on this slide, we have a picture of a bee bread frame. It's beautiful, all different types of pollen. Um, and if you don't see any of that, you should be considering feeding some pollen substitute, depending on at what time of year you're, you're inspecting your bees. Um, in addition to the pollen, you do need to be aware of the fact whether they have open nectar or not. Um, now, obviously, in the winter, open nectar isn't a big deal, but in the build-up portions of the year, the bees don't generally like to tear open honey cells. So if they only have capped honey frames, it is a good idea to either you know, pull those frames out and replace them with blank ones and feed them, um, or just you know, pay attention to what else they have inside that hive and make sure that they've got some open nectar that they can use to build the brood nest. So definitely pay attention to whether they have enough pollen and open nectar during each inspection. Okay, and now queen cups. Queen cups are an interesting thing that cause a lot of new beekeepers a lot of concern, but they're not so much a, a real cause of concern for me anyway. Um, what queen cups are, are the beginnings of a queen cell without anything in them. So no egg and no larvae, no, no pupa or anything like that inside it. Uh, it's just the base, little base start of a queen cell. Um, I don't recommend you pull them out because it's more of an insurance policy for those bees and they are just going to make them again. Um, but definitely pay attention to what's inside them because the second they've got an egg in them, you have a queen event uh, on its way. So. Don't pull them out or freak out when you see them, but definitely check inside them to make sure that a queen event isn't happening. Um, and then as far as queen cups, you can use those as a sign of swarming. If you had no queen cups a week ago and then you get in and there's 15 or 20 queen cups all over the place and on the bottoms of frames, that can be a good indication of the beginnings of swarm preparation. Uh, but once again, don't rip them out and don't start freaking out like you're going to lose all of your bees. Uh, just use that along with some other context clues to try to figure out exactly what's going on. And then, you know, use some more information in this crash course to figure out exactly what you should do. Uh, because if they are creating a bunch of new ones and if you see something in those queen cups, like I said, that is an impending queen event. All right, now we have queen cells. Uh, queen cells, as you, I'm sure, could guess at this point, are the end result of a queen cup after they have been given an egg or a larvae. Um, and this is the definite sign of a queen event. Once again, you're going to have to use a bunch of different context clues to figure out whether it's a supersedure, an emergency, or a swarm event. Um, and we'll talk more about that going forward in this crash course. But knowing if when you do see queen cells, uh, it is a 100% chance that you have a queen event going on and uh, it is on you to try to figure out exactly what queen event that is and what it is you should be doing. 
Um, my general advice is in a super seizure event, just let them do it. In an emergency event, depending on the time of year, let them do it. Uh, if it's a little late in the year, you really, really want honey out of that hive, possibly consider purchasing a queen. But in a swarm event, we'll talk a lot about swarm preparation and swarm prevention and reaction and all that. But in a swarm event, uh, the, the fix is a little bit more complicated and you'd have to figure out exactly at what stage of the swarm process they're in. And like I said, we'll talk a lot more about that as this crash course goes on. Okay, and then signs of disease and or mite infestation is something to always be aware of. This poor bee in this slide has a bad case. She's dead, but she had a bad case of deformed wing virus. And uh, as you can see, the, her wings are very deformed. And uh, that is a disease that is not only vectored and brought in by mites, but it's also been made much worse by the fact that the mites are carrying it biologically. These viruses are mutating inside the mites and then being injected into our bees in ways that they never were before. Um, so these diseases are very, very important to keep an eye out for and very, very important to keep these mite loads down uh, so that your bees aren't dying looking like this. Uh, so don't rely on visual sight for mites as a, a sign whether you have them or not. You do definitely have them and they're usually on the undersides of bees. So an, a proper alcohol wash is the only way to tell whether you have a bad mite problem or not. Um, so when I'm talking about signs of disease and or mite infestation, I am not saying look and if you don't see them, you're good. I'm saying look to see all of the clues that you have, whether these bees look healthy, whether the brood nest looks healthy, whether there are pupae or larvae being pulled out of the cells, um, whether any wings look deformed or if there are any flightless, hairless bees in front of the hive. These are all signs of disease. But once again, we're going to have a lot more on disease and mite control in the third portion of our crash course. Okay, and then signs of pests are another thing uh, that we should be concerned about. The two pests that cause the most worry in my mind are wax moths and small hive beetles. Uh, they can both cause a lot of problems. My recommendation for you in any case with pests is to keep strong, healthy bees in a proper sized hive. As long as you have bees that are occupying the vast majority of the vacancy inside the hive, they'll have the ability to keep it free of those pests. Uh, it is only when you're adding space that they can't defend that these bees lack the ability to defend it and then you'll see infestations. Um, but it, as far as signs of small hive beetles or wax moths, wax moths will draw, will run um, silk, like a silken thread through the combs and completely destroy them. They'll also dig little divots into the side of your boxes. Uh, so you'll see little divots chunked out of the side of the boxes and you'll see thread like silk webbing through uh, your frames. And then for small hive beetles, they're little grubs that are the small hive beetle larvae. And those will uh, bring with them a bunch of yeast, a specific type of yeast, that they will leave in and on the cells that then ferments the honey and does what we call slimes out the hive. So uh, it, it's very, very important to keep these things out of your hive, or at least largely out of your hive. And the best method for that is keeping a strong and healthy hive that has a great ability to defend their you know, overall area. Okay, so that is uh, it for knowing what to look for. The next uh, section will be on inspecting your hive and uh, we will continue to get more and more involved in these lessons uh, and more and more advanced. Uh, later on in this section, we'll be talking about splitting and combining hives. And in the next section, we'll be talking about mites and disease and all that stuff. So. I hope you guys are digging it. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.